All right, uh, Dylan muted himself. I'm gonna quickly just get in a quick. Man, I hope you weren't. I hope that. Oh fuck! Oh god damn it! What would he do? He yeah, he was real mean to Mark Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I wasn't even gonna do this, but then I was like, ah, oh, Dylan's not listening. Let's quickly get it in. Yeah, he was just like. You know, John Cena did, thought Mark Henry was the shit, so that's why I wrestled John Cena, and 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 fuck you, I'm right back. He goes before our WrestleMania match. Mark Henry was asleep in the back, and people were talking to me about having to wrestle that fat piece of shit. And I'm sitting here like Ryback, bud. What? You can't. No. I'm sorry someone hurt you. No, shush, 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 shush. Dylan's back. We're not talking about Ryback. It's oh, not fuck, Ryback. Fuck, okay, okay, shit. No, it's... <laughs> I heard you. I didn't turn the fucking oh, no! headset oh, off. I turned the mic off. We've been found out, kids. Welcome to Fight Boys, a show about professional and not so professional wrestling. I'm your host, proud to announce I'm making my return to the ring to face off against Roman Reigns. Oh, wait, what? No, I'm not. No, this was all fucking bullshit. Okay, anyways, I'm Scotty Moore. Hey, I'm three simultaneous finishers at the same time, much like what Scotty just experienced, Blake Tanner. <laughs> hey, uh, remember, when you spell my name, it's all caps, the Dylan. Yes. So, yeah, um, we didn't record last week because I'll be honest, I just didn't fucking want to. And uh, but I fell asleep. So, yeah, like, did I didn't help. Asleep. Um, the one that I wanted to talk about how excited I was for Adam Pierce versus Roman Reigns. Because holy shit, that match would actually fucking rip because Pierce is amazing. And then this week they said. Nah, actually, no, no, you're just gonna get Roman versus Kevin again. It's gonna be a good match, but no, no out of I do Pierce. like, oh, come on, you at least have to love the way that, that Pierce did that. Oh, with a broken-ass microphone that made Vince McMahon so angry? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. yeah. No, 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 the bit where, like, I just love the bit where Roman signs, and, like, Paul Heyman's doing, he's like, I've been waiting this whole time for you to do that. He just takes it, just slowly walks up, then starts faking the fucking injury. Yep. Then talks about how he knows what's in the contract because he's one of the fucking backstage people and then just hands it off to KO. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't give WWE credit very often. That was amazing. Oh, it was. I was hoping there would be like a return and it wouldn't just be Kevin again. But like, I'm fine with it. My favorite, though, was when he was like, assuming I'm not medically cleared before the Rumble. I'm like, no, we're pretty sure you're not going to be medically cleared before the Rumble. You'll walk Wouldn't in you know there with I a paper missing cut. missing those doctor's appointments. <laughs> yeah, you're going to walk in there with a paper cut and they'll be like, no, you, he's going to have to fight Kevin. <laughs> He's going to have to do it. No, sir. I'm sorry. You cannot compete tonight. No, yeah. no, sir. You tripped. No, sir. Yeah. Honestly, Adam Pierce as a fucking authority figure is surprisingly great. Like, I, I hated in the beginning when it was just like random backstage bald man. But now the fact that they're like, no, that's Adam Pierce. You put respect on his name. And even throughout the whole show, like everyone was like, we're so excited to see you back in the ring. Like, it wasn't a uh, John Cena versus Laurinaitis thing of like, oh, he's going to fight a stooge. No, it's no Pierce can fuck someone up and we're going to make sure the audience knows that. And I think he does uh, the backstage uh, like manager position pretty well. Like, yeah, because he doesn't. He doesn't. They don't make the storylines about him unless it's a specific situation, and it's not always like what his whims are. He's just there, and I kind of forget about him, which yeah. is how I exactly yeah, like want a, the GM like to a, be. It's it's like a less distinguished William Regal. Yeah, that I was gonna say. You know, also, there, there's Commissioner a, there's an Foley. Air of authority, but everybody looks at William Regal like, oh man, shit's gonna go down. Yeah, everybody pops when they see Regal. I. I fucking loved the segment with him and AJ on Raw before the Kevin turn because he AJ ran up to him. Man, if I win the Royal Rumble, 
and you win the uh, the title, you're not going to win the title. But if you win the title, we can fight at WrestleMania. And Pierce is like, I'm just trying to do my fucking job, AJ. Calm down. No, AJ, I, I don't want this, actually. This is not, you've misunderstood the situation, Mr. Styles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then this week he came up to him and was like, you're a coward. Then Ricochet said, no, he's not. You're the one who ran. Anyways, you want to Styles clash me out of mid fucking air like a mad lad? Yeah, let's go do it. Honestly, that show was comically bad. Like it was one of those that I'm like, it's so bad that I'm enjoying it kind of shows. But then AJ versus Ricochet happened and I was like, all's forgiven. I don't care that you opened the show with Gimp Mask Randy Orton. You're perfectly fine in my book, uh, WWE. God. I, that is one thing about WWE is if the ending is bad, you'll always remember the ending. And if the ending is good, you'll be willing to forgive all of the bad that you just saw. Yeah. And like False, the, but good, the, good theory. Yeah. The ending's been divisive, though, because the ending, of course, was Alexa Bliss versus Asuka, which, by the way, their segment earlier on the show was phenomenal. Because it was just both of them trying to see who could be the most fucking insane. And Asuka won. I don't know how. <laughs> but Asuka won. She was just like, let's dance. And then her music starts playing for no apparent reason. And Alexa's just staring like, I've got no fucking clue. You win. You win the crazy off. But then she doesn't because... uh. Then she gets possessed by demon fiend powers and wrecks Asuka's shit. And I enjoyed it. I know not everybody did, but I enjoyed seeing Alexa. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, just yeah, going to sit back and it's wait part for of my this. Heel of the week. No, honestly, that was the most civil discussion me and Dylan have ever had about wrestling was about this fucking Asuka Alexa match. Because I was like, well, no, this was just to show off Alexa's new powers. Asuka wasn't prepared for it. In the future, she will be. It's like Abaddon and Sheeta. And then Dylan was like, I understand that, but I disagree with him. Like, what happened to us? We used to scream at each other. Uh, she has shit gear, though. I will not be swayed on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, oh. I don't hate it based on... Well, here's the thing. I wish that it changed when she went full fiend mode. Because I wish it wasn't a skirt. I really wish we weren't going for this weird Lolita vibe because it's starting to creep me out hardcore. Oh, yeah. It's fine when she's in the fun house. Same as it's, I'm perfectly fine with Bray Wyatt wearing a fucking sweater on WWE TV because it fits that character. I wish when she morphed, more stuff changed outside of, oh, her skirt is now black and she has black lipstick. Uh, I think it's easy. It you could have given her, you could have given her pants. That would have been a big thing. Yeah. Pants are a big thing for people. Pants are great. Honestly, like, you imagine long... if Randy Orton wore pants, <laughs> world would explode. <laughs> maybe like long black and white striped pseudo Beetlejuice pants, maybe to yeah, pay... that would work. Yeah, that would look really, really good. But I understand they want to try to keep some similarity between her and normal. Um, also, she did throw a fireball in a man's face the week before, so. Holy shit. WWE with all these fire Thank mages. <laughs> my my favorite Keith. fucking Keith Lee tweet of all time. God bless It's Keith concerning. Lee. <laughs> it's so You know, concerning. if I had a nickel for every time I saw somebody get a fireball toss in their face, I'd have two nickels. Which is not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, uh, even even weirder that it was within the same month and a half. <laughs> Like, that was a good episode of Raw, too, and I was actually really hyped to see Triple H and Randy Orton fight. Then I remembered, oh, wait, they're building up Fiend shit. And then Alexa come out. I'm like, okay, I might be able to get behind this because, like, Triple H had a flaming sledgehammer, all kinds of creepy shit. And I'm like, okay, this could be good. Fireball! Okay, it's not going to be good. Let's move on to NXT. Let's see what happens on NXT now. And then Nacho Libre mask. Nacho. <laughs> oh, 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 fucking Libre. 
also uh we would it is if you if you drain the color i think it's the same mask I, it, it's full on like an old school mr wrestling number one mask i actually jokingly called him mr wrestling number two and my dad got mad at me because wrestling number two was his favorite growing up and he goes no number one had the pure white mask number two had some black pattern on it i'm like fine okay I'll mr change. wrestling number three is steve carino <laughs> It's like, fine, uh, Dad, I'll change oh, my fucking joke. Before we do move on to NXT, though, I know you deleted it, but we just got to appreciate how Keith Lee fucked up that turnbuckle. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> and the fact that he then turned to Seamus like, did I do that? <laughs> it was also a look of like, the fuck do we do now? I know what I'd do on the indies, but what do we do now? <laughs> uh, apparently, that was supposed to happen. Apparently, they were like, we need an exciting thing to happen to throw us off into commercial, which usually is like a suicide dive or someone getting put through a table. But this time, they were like, what if we break the fucking ring? I don't care. We lost Drew for two weeks, so we are kind of needing to make up time. I'm going to be honest, though. If that is the reasoning, at least they're trying. Because yeah, it's always a suicide dive. You said it, you, it might be a suicide dive. It's always a suicide dive. To a point where now I instinctively get ready to fast forward through the commercials at every suicide. The match could have just begun. And I'm like, suicide dive? Okay, they're going to commercial. It's okay. Uh-huh. God, watching them try to make up time during that Raw was phenomenal. Because it was just like, okay, Sheamus and Keith Lee win a tag match. Go to commercial. Come back. Hey, they're fighting now. We don't know why, but they're fucking fighting now. <sighs> so, so it's a three-hour show. They have a roster of what? Four dozen people? If three not, dozen? Yeah, if not more. Like they've got a shit right. ton. And of people. they can't just put some shit on to kill some time. Apparently not. Apparently not. There was nothing they they were willing to give a lot of time to. But then they were like, but you know who does deserve three segments? Charlotte and Lacey Evans in the worst angle of 2021 already. Oh, it's still going? So, wait, 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 wait. I finally remember what this reminds me of. You remember when Don Marie dated Tori Wilson's dad? Yes! Oh. Yes! That's what this reminds me of. Except I don't think there's an underlying lesbian vibe to it. <laughs> All right, on to uh, NXT. And honestly... Oh, man, I broke Blake with that one. I feel bad. <laughs> you can't. I've honestly, only seen I'm... clips of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the bad. Fuck. Uh, bad and great at the same time. All we really have news-wise is Dusty Cup shit at this point. Because a lot of upsets. Was not expecting the upsets there were. Which ones? Which ones were like big upsets for you? Because for me, most of it, I was like, I think I could see that. I, I didn't see Tony losing in the first round. Tony and uh... oh, Merce <laughs> Mercedes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I did not see that one. That one was bizarre. Who were they fighting? Was it Casey Cabbabab and whoever oh, her partner then is? Then I do get it. They're really pushing them as like a duo for the long. They are the Bailey and Sasha of NXT. They are the ones that it's like, oh, they are connected. Wait, um, didn't Bailey and Sasha used to be the Bailey and Sasha of NXT? Well, not actually. Ironically, no. Somehow, when they got that the, to the that was the Becky and Sasha of NXT. It, uh, yeah, yeah, that was true. They were they were together more. Bailey and Sasha were always rivals in and NXT. Apparently, to fill out the women's bracket, they had to hire three new wrestlers, including Priscilla Kelly. So I am excited to see Priscilla on TV again. But holy didn't shit, they, kind of didn't they bump? Didn't they bump off one of like Shayna Baszler's underlings? Probably wasn't uh the blonde one. What's her name? Uh, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I think so. Maybe I, I all I know is they ended up hiring three new women to take part in this. Who and, was it? It was Priscilla Kelly and who else? Um, the other ones I actually were not that familiar with. Let me see. That's right. Is 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 Zaylee still murdering people? Uh, yeah, and it's real fucking weird. It's real fucking weird, but it's okay. Uh, in addition, the Rascals is it, are now wait, known is she as... she's still in ridiculous shape? Because I don't know if they changed it for this angle, but that woman is, like, not quite, like, uh, oh, 
Rhea Ripley levels, but like, yeah. Well, she's always been in good shape, I think, right? Yeah, that's the that's the thing. They're like, they, they, there are two levels of fit in NXT. There's like the oh, like swimsuit model, and then there's like her and Rhea, where it's like, I see you live at the gym. <laughs> yes. That that is that is you what drink I aspire solely to. Solely protein powder. That must be so difficult. Uh, they also hired Elena Black and Lacey Ryan were the other two hires. I do like that the tweet they released actually gave their previous names. They weren't going to be like Gigi Dolan's here. It's like no, if, if it's fucking Priscilla Kelly. Don't worry about it. Like here are all the people. Um, that happened. Other dusty classic news: the Rascals are MSK, and they have become two creator wrestlers that like to do flips a lot. And I'm a little upset about it. <laughs> Wasn't that who they were previously? Well, yeah, they they had something, but I feel like their gimmick of just being some weed smoking hooligans won't translate well to family friendly WWE television. Uh, but I don't know. They let Matt Riddle exist. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vince saw Bill and, or uh, Jay and Silent Bob strike back and was like, we need one of them. Riddle, you do that. Uh, yeah, they debuted. Honestly, I thought they could have had a better debut. I wanted them, honestly, to knock off UE in the first round because that would have been a badass debut for them. Uh, also, I can't did, remember. Did they ever explain what that stands for? MSK? Um, no, but the fucking theories on the internet are phenomenal, including marijuana smoking kids, the <laughs> mean street kids, like, it's all shit like that. Um, also, I can't remember who got bumped off, but someone got bumped off because they love the pairing of Thatcher and Ciampa so much that they said, they're going in the Dusty Classic, and yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate that at all. The Didn't Ever Rise lose in the first round? Yeah, they Ever Rise lost to uh, MSK, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. There were Poor some... guys can't catch a break. Yeah, Brizongo also lost in the first round, which for me, I was like, really? I get it. Like, Undisputed Era needs to keep moving forward to build up their storyline with uh, Lorcan and Birch, but don't get rid of Brizongo that quickly. I love them. Yeah, I, I just want to see them do more of their shit. Yeah. Lucha House Party won a match. <laughs> a match. I think they're going to be the next Raw Tag Team Champions, to be honest with you. Because they're feuding with a slowly breaking apart Hurt Business. So I'm very excited to see that. Uh, on to AEW, and the two-week rule applies because they fixed the Bullet Club angle. Because like I said, Matt and Nick are not part of the Elite anymore. <laughs> They, well, they they are. Yeah. They they they're the only part of the elite unfortunately. Um Oh, that's what they're billing Gallows, Anderson and Kenny Art is as the elite. It is so fucking good. Like um I don't know if you read about it. What happened they interviewed the Bucks and Kenny getting ready for the match and Kenny's like, "We can go out, we can do all the trio shit." And then Don's like, "No, you go out first. They're the tag champs. Let them come out second. Kenny comes out and then Don basically looks at the crowd and says, "We're betraying the young Bucks, good brothers." Jesus. He's he's betraying the young Bucks. My favorite thing is on BTE where the Bucks are like, yeah, what what happened? And they're like, listen, we were just coming through on our way to, we thought the tables were on Orlando for impact. We were coming through Jacksonville on our way to a payday. You know we don't want to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nick's like, that's right. They, they do hate wrestling. Yeah, hate it. It's so good. Goddamn right. I fucking, I, I really like this angle now. I, I mean, I even liked it when it started. But well, you guys talked about Don Callis holding Kenny Omega back. I, I don't forget that. I okay, still I, am listen, not. Two week rule applied. Yeah, I'm still not a big fan of Callis. I'm not going to lie. Kenny this week, however, really did have a lot of like updated cleaner vibes to him. He's wearing like a shitty like the shirt. Yeah, that shitty ass purple shirt is so good. I, I do like uh, Kenny and Callus together, though. Like, I think there is something with them being together that makes them better than if it was just Callus doing his own thing. Uh, did you guys? Uh, did you guys watch Impact? 
I didn't see some spoilers about that. I did not, but I did watch the main event of Hard to Kill where Kenny Omega came out in your Bullet Club shirt. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Mm, it felt good. I was like, ah, people haven't forgotten about that one. <laughs> then again, he to- then again he-, he had it cut up, so he's probably just like, oh yeah, this is one I don't give a shit about. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny did have a great tweet earlier this week, though, because, uh, you know, he was talking about this week I was at three different promotions with three different rosters, and fuck, man, wrestling's great right now. Yep. Uh, I will say this week was a little rough on AEW, but it honestly seemed more like production shit than anything else. Like, everyone seemed like they were rushed, and that's what led to a lot of problems. Like, there were audio problems, there was uh, timing issues, there was a bit where Team Taz call out Sting and Darby, and afterwards they're like, Balls in your court! Five second pause, which leads to Jim Ross, who did not help the matters, just go, Well, that was an awkward silence. (laughs) <laughs> you know how Jim likes to get meta sometimes on his commentary? He got real bad on it this week. It was real rough this week. But uh Oh no. Also, uh Hangman Page hasn't joined the Dark Order yet. Everybody big sad. I'll be honest, mm-hmm. that was the beginning of the downfall of this week's dynamite for me. Was I was like, oh it's, he- he's gonna go back. It's a longer storyline. Give it two more weeks. I loved the comparisons to asking a girl out kind of things <laughs> i like you I, I think you're really handsome and strong and i think you're a good wrestler and i just want to know will you join the dark order man i didn't want to have to do this but i can't he said yes <laughs> jesus i i do love that there this is the new slow this is like the medium burn on the slow burn to <laughs> kenny omega versus hangman yeah, yeah. I, I just like because he's like, I got burned by the group thing before, which means that it's, they're going to win him over. He's going to join a group again. He's going to learn to love. Yeah. Uh, in addition, because they're fucking three man finisher slaps. Oh, the fucking what was it? It was. Um, oh, God, why can't I remember the name of Hangman's Lariat? Buckshot Lariat into German suplex into a jackknife pin. It was fucking yeah, for- insane. And then and then Silvers and Reynolds had their like three piece combo before that. Like it just went crazy. Uh, they are the best part of AEW. And the fact that they had to do a dark part this week made me a little sad. I know. I know. It's it's okay. Anyway, back to impact. So um Tony Khan continues to be um <laughs> yes. yeah. the greatest thing ever. In, he's the greatest thing in like the last year of Impact like I literally I thought there wasn't one on Tuesday like I thought there was one of those segments and I got sad and then somebody posted on Reddit and I was like oh thank goodness there's another paid advertisement there was a paid ad and he showed up there live to watch Private Party become number one contenders which was weird that they're now number one contenders to the heel Good Brothers titles but then they turned heel on AEW so here's the thing. Uh, here's my theory. Also, I love the bit where uh, they they like what turn to the uh, the impact stuff after. So like it seemed more of a thing of like Tony was just like, yeah, I'm not gonna film in front of your shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I love that I love that one in that thing. He's like, I brought Matt Hardy here because I can't out carn you, but Matt Hardy can. He's the, <laughs> he's a shyster. He used the word shyster. God. I haven't heard that word used in a used in a like a, an earnest manner in years. <laughs> yeah. Jerry I Lynn that. helped like f up a finisher. Help up a finish like Oh my god, everything about that was so was so wonderful. But so wonder- also, Private Party look like they fit in Impact way more than AEW. Oh yeah, like, they just look like they they look like they'd be top guys. There. That sounds kind of like an insult, but I agree with you. Yeah, it's like it, no, no, no. It's more like the vibe because the Impact Zone, like for some reason, like the colors, like everything about it, it like it's just a different. More. Yeah, it pops more. It's more of an indie. You get like more of an indie vibe off of that, and they like. They, like, thrive off of it. Whereas on AEW, they seem, like, too small. I don't know. It's like the, um, I hate to call it this, but the Adam Rose syndrome, where Adam Rose was, like, fucking great in NXT, 
because it was so much. Every entrance was so much. And then once you move him to a, the main roster, where he's just a tiny conga line of people in this massive stadium, it doesn't work as well. I think that may be what it is with Private Party. No, that that makes sense, though, because you think if you have a smaller venue to work with than the guys that really, honestly, they're the guys that WWE would put on house shows, every house show, because that's that same kind of energy. It's that same kind of feel, aesthetic, just everything like they could hype that's like crowd in a small space. Um, yeah. When there's when there are crowds again, they're going to feel more like it. But I, I think it's the lack of crowds because back yeah. whenever because like. Like, if there are crowds, whenever their song gets to shots, shots, you you know all the fucking, like, yeah, that would be a thing, but. Also, um, speaking of people Vince would put on house shows because they're just that good, Dolph Ziggler won the tag team championships, and I love the fact that no one cares. No one, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know until I watched the SmackDown after that they had won. I remember I, sitting back. I didn't know until you I didn't know you until you told me right now. <laughs> same. I was about to say the same fucking thing. What happened? Uh, who who did he even tag with? Who is uh, Dolph Ziggler? Bobby Rude <laughs> and Dolph Ziggler beat um I no, I almost called them private party and I know for a fact that's fucking wrong. Uh, um <laughs> Shit, what's their names? Why can't I remember them? They're so good. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. Kind of just wanna Street Profits. You're thinking of the Street, street Profits. profits. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, they they beat them for the tag titles apparently on SmackDown. And then the next week the Street Profits were like, hey, fuck you, actually. You're not even a real team. Uh but speaking of good shit, Tony Khan's done. A he filed to copyright too sweet, which I think will lead to a fight between them and WWE. Or did they only did WWE copyright too sweet or just the symbol, the infamous hand symbol? I can't remember. Uh, there was something about that. I don't know. <sighs> Because yeah, I remember that's... they ran into trouble with it before doing yeah, it. Yeah, that's where all the cease and desist shit came from, because WWE copyrighted it, and they can no longer do two sweets. But but here's the thing. Um, they didn't have $7 billion. Yeah, exactly. Oh, fuck. That was the best part of uh, the Bucks segment with uh, Callus this week, is they go to Kenny's house because they say the elite are going to have a meeting there. Only Callus is there, and he tries to buy off the bucks. So you see him write, like, numerous zeros on a check, hands it to Matt, and Matt looks at it and goes, We made this in merch sales last fucking week. No, you can't buy us. <laughs> My favorite thing is, like, actually, you know, we used to work for the company you're vice president's for. This check could probably bounce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in addition to that, Sting is confirmed to be wrestling again. It is going to be him and Darby Allen versus Team Taz in a street fight. Not really where I would, well, kind of, maybe that's the best place to bring the Stinger back. Tag match street fight so Darby can handle most of the pain and Sting can kind of just chill. Yes, yeah, Sting comes say, in and do Sting things. Darby Allen is going to continue his quest to die. Yeah. Uh, and then also in Wait, Ring who, of Honor who, news. Who had a Team Taz? Huh? Who, who out of Team Taz? Uh, Cage and Starks, I believe. Okay, because if it was Cage and Hobbs, then then they were winning. Yeah, uh, that's 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 too much big meaty men. It, it's probably to set up Starks versus Darby for the title, which I'm excited for to get him away from Cage. Because I'm sure God, they, is that is is that feud ever going to end? I don't. Starks know. and Darby have been feuding for like legitimately like fucking eight months. On and off. Yeah, that's one of those that I was like, okay, it's gotta be over, because Darby climbed the fucking mountain, and it was a climb last week. Surely, Sting's gonna come out to congratulate him. Either Darby's gonna turn heel and attack Sting, or someone else will be interfering. But no, it's Team Taz just fucking hates Darby Allen so much. Yeah. Man, although I would love just... The, the visual of somebody in his twilight years in wrestling betraying Sting again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
Sting, you're gonna go out on your back after another betrayal. Tony, man. Nah, you got this, dog. Uh, In addition, uh, ROH news, Dalton Castle is a free agent, and he has filed for a copyright for the name Dalton Castle, so maybe he'll fight Darby Allin one day. I, I want good things for Dalton Castle. I just... Did he ever improve ring in ring wise because that was the one thing he was always lacking for me was in ring stuff see i always liked his in ring because it was such a departure from his personality yeah was he actually used amateur wrestling and people were just like what the fuck this dude was just like had like a throne of actual like half naked men what the fuck and he just german suplexed a man to hell (laughs) he's gone now But you know, I would love, I would love nothing more than to see Dalton Castle in in AEW because the production value of his entrances alone would rival Cody's. Oh yeah, easily. Which, by the way, Cody's apparently just like you know, my entrance, it's missing one thing, and it's Snoop Dogg because now he comes out to the Snoop thing theme every single week. But I will say. It's a banger. It is a banger of a theme. It is a banger. Like, it's good. I don't know if it replaces just Kingdom Proper as a good, like, song for him, but I understand why he's changed it and why he's using it now. That song was getting long because there was, like, there was, like, fucking 30 seconds of weird noises, and then there was the wrestling has more than one royal fan. Like, it was such a build-up before you got to his actual song. Like, the self-indulgence of this motherfucker... Is there nobody looking at him being like, wrap it, like, I, you need, like, the wrap it up box from fucking Chappelle's show with this motherfucker. <laughs> they need to start playing him off. Yeah. No, because that would start the theme song again, and then we'll be there for another five hours. No, oh, no. He's trying I- to get to taker levels, but, like, not in a good way. Yeah. But you know what's, who's always in a good way with me and my heart? Our patrons at patreon.com slash load of BS. It's where you can support us. It's where you get access to tons of exclusive content like Wrestling History X. I just published Dylan's second half of his talk about Kenny Omega's junior heavyweight run. Um, and also, you get to watch me and Blake react to us being idiots in college doing wrestling shit. Because that's, we rewatch the OG JWF uh, War episodes. And you can get all of that at patreon.com slash a load of BS. Who are we annoying this week, Dylan? Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you want to t- tweet well wishes to Dalton Castle? And let him know that we still care about him. Big Daddy Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Big Daddy Dalton, I was on, I, oh, fuck, I forgot I was on one of Dalton Castle's little road diaries things he does. Hey, at Dalton Castle, that's all I got. Should we just tweet, hey, Dalton Castle? Uh, hey, hey, Dalton Castle, uh, hope you, hope you get to live out all your dreams now that you're no longer trapped in Baltimore. Live your dreams. Seek your truth. Escape Baltimore. More. <laughs> He's gonna be like, I got this tattooed on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why oh. don't we? Oh, wait a minute. I forgot about this special extra segment I came up with because I'm fairly sure this person is now banned from heels and baby faces. <laughs> Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, what the fuck did Chris Jericho do this week? Judas in, Judas <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> Actually, that was the one good thing Jericho did this week, and it wasn't even Jericho that did it. I was watching Up Up Down Down's Battle of the Brands because they bought that back, and at the end, uh, Creed asks Breeze, hey, can you let me talk to the audience for a few? He goes, yeah, yeah, sure. And then when he cuts back, he, he goes, I was trying to get your attention and you weren't listening. And he goes, oh yeah, I was watching a music video. And Creed just stares at him and he goes, were you listening to Judas? I was! I was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Chris Jericho just kind of dropped the fact that, yeah, I had COVID in September, it's okay. Yeah, it's no big deal. You mean when you were on, like, every episode of AEW? Yeah, but I'm fine. I'm okay. It's just COVID. It's just COVID-19. It's just what's killed a lot of people. It's fine. 
Uh, I, I actually think that I know that something went on because I remember Tony talking about this not too long ago after it came out that Jericho had COVID. I, like, I think <clears throat> Meltzer reported that there was a two-week time enough for him to be able to rest in between uh, tapings. I believe that was what was said, because Nick Jackson got it at a very similar time, but he missed the first set of tapings, came back for the second one. Right. Uh, but still, the fact that he's so dismissive of it is... I just had COVID. It's no big deal. I am going to have to slightly mention this man on my heels, but he is not my heel this week. Oh, Jericho? Mm-hmm. Um, man, I'm trying to... I feel like he did some more bullshit, but I can't... I just can't... Other than ruin the main event, uh, <laughs> let's get into our heels and baby faces of the week. Blake, would you like to take this segue and just ride it Paul Blart style? Yeah, it's heel time, baby. Fuck. Um, a lot of people in wrestling. Not, not a lot. Some people. Some people that we know of. I mean, wrestling, of course, is a very storied business with, among carnies and people who just love to lie and love lies and lie so much that they forget what's lie and what's the truth. And that is why I am coming to you with my heel this week. The disturbing amount of people that have been somehow connected to QAnon and all that bullshit that led to hundreds of people trying to take away democracy. Um, QAnon, that's hilariously um, failing. Hilariously failing, though. Uh, QAnon, that's Sammy Callahan's new gimmick, isn't it? That's that's what he's doing now? (laughs) He's like the spooky hacker guy, like Anonymous? Yeah, yeah, no, no, QAnon is, like, even worse, Anonymous, but Anonymous was literally <laughs> no one and everyone, so you couldn't Hold on, I, I want pa- to pause them. to, I want to pause to tell them, Scott, I, I recognize your, I recognize that reference, I wanted you to know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, but, so, um, earlier this week there was a, uh, an article by Mel Magazine, so, of course, the best source that I could find, but it did, uh, it did bring up a lot of people who have been uh, in touch, kind of, uh, who have been accused or thought of or just blatantly tweeting QAnon bullshit and living in this world where their facts are fake, but they are facts for them because Q is God at this point and is never wrong, even though Q is always wrong. What does the Q stand for? I don't fucking know, dude. I actually don't know. Q is like the person that heads it. It so, stands for Cool Anonymous, but they can't spell cool correctly because they're dipshits. Yeah. So here's a there's a list. Like, uh, seven wrestlers were mentioned, and I want you guys to tell me how surprised you are to hear these names. Let's start off with Chris Jericho. Um, no. Most- you don't say! Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And it's not because, like, always because they're actually, like, retweeting or posting this stuff on their own. It's just they're kind of around people or giving people a voice that have this, say- like, yeah. Like Chris Jericho has been doing with people who so shouldn't we're not have voices. Full on, so we're not full on saying Chris Jericho's a member of QAnon, but he has certainly gave a voice to QAnon. Yes. Yeah, it's like Joe Rogan. Right, yeah. exactly. Oh, we'll get into him in a minute. <laughs> we will. Um, but uh, should I come back later? <laughs> <laughs> no. Other than Jericho, uh, Drake Younger, Matt nope. Morgan, no nope. Venus. No, no, definitely not. Yep. Uh, Nia Jax, uh, fuck, of course. Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan is mayor of a city near me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> God, I forgot he was a mayor. Now, Nia... Oh, wait. Nia Jax. Yeah, no, no, I get it. Nia Jax, yeah. Now, uh, of course, after this, Flip Gordon. Um, No. No. And, of course, uh, I'm just... I can't believe flabbergasted that this guy's on the list. Austin Aries. No! You don't... Oh, no. Surprising nobody. Um, Yeah, holy shit, dude. It's... It's... Fuck. That's the problem. There's just it, they're either really cool or total dipshits in the world of professional wrestling. I don't think there are many in between folks. No, however, Roderick I, Strong. 
<laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay, you you got me there. Um, I I will say that I think that in the current environment now, it the scales have started to flip, so there are not as many terribly ter oh, just absolutely I, terrible people. I believe you mean the scales began to flip. Blip, 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 blip. No, Man, not for I, him. I fucking got, I, I got an iPod and I started loading up all my Spotify on there and I forgot how good that theme song is. And every single time I'm like, I hope you don't get money from this, but I am going to jam to it. Yeah. So anyway, fuck these guys. Fuck these people. All of them. Um, yeah. I, I was going to leave with a very, uh, Good point, but I've already forgotten it because of how angry this makes me. Well, on to mine, and this one's actually about wrestling. Blake's our reporter on the ground with how wrestling affects real life. I'm back to normal wrestling, but it does involve Joe Rogan and one of his latest guests. You may have heard of him. Mean Mark Callis <laughs> from uh -oh. the 90s. You remember him? Mark Mark Calloway. I'm sorry. Mark Cal well, no, he's mean Mark Callis, uh, but he did work as Mark Calloway around Texas for a few. Had a Isn't small that run. his real name? Yeah, his real name's Mark Calloway. Had a small run as this character called The Undertaker, which is fucking dumb. And Joe asked him if he still enjoys watching because of the way the product has changed. I try. It's tough right now for me. The product's changed so much and it's kind of off. Yeah, I'm still with him. I'll probably piss a lot of people off, but they need to hear it. It is what it is. Now that, no. <laughs> now, now anytime no. somebody like him leads off with the statement, I'm probably going to piss people off, that's when you know we're in bad territory. To the young guys who think he's a bitter old guy, I'm not bitter. I did my time. Walked away when I wanted to walk away. Unless did Saudi you? Arabia called. Yeah. I'm did like, you? <laughs> did you though? I just think the product's a little soft. There's guys here and there that have an edge to them, but there's there's too much pretty and not enough substance, I think, right now. Do you remember the matches in the Attitude Era? <laughs> They weren't good. They weren't, like, technically good. No, you barely had... There's a reason why the best technical wrestlers are some of the most well-remembered from that time. Or so, with the ones with the best psychology. Because they're the ones that had the good matches. Yet, yet Scotty doesn't believe me that Lance Storm is good. <laughs> oh, no, fucking... No, I, I think he's good. He's just boring as all hell uh one of the big things that happened was that the generation before we all got old at the same time so there mm, i call bullshit on that so there weren't enough guys to work with the young guys you can listen to the fans or you can listen to someone who's been there and done it there was just not enough of the merging of the young and new talent i kind of agree with that i guess kind of it's just a matter of the fact that he was just like, back in my day, you'd walk in and find real men. Some of them have knives and guns, and now you walk in and they've all got their their PlayStations and their Nintendo 64s in there, in there with them. And they're just not, they're not as much real men as they used to be. Oh, did, there did he, it is. Did he use the term real men? I believe so. At which point, uh, your favorite and mine, Austin Creed, tweeted, I wouldn't be the person that I am without the guidance and lessons of a few key people from the previous generation of wrestling. They taught me about the business to save my money and that having video games in my locker room is healthier than having redacted. Thank you, guys. Booyah. God bless I mean, he him. fucking killed it on that. Because the one thing is, oh, guess what? Do we have people just, you know, ODing every uh, like six months in the business nowadays? But no. where's the cocaine and the hookers and Ric Flair naked except for his robe on an airplane inappropriately talking to women? No, no, yeah. we still get that, actually. But yeah, it's just Woo! a matter... <laughs> it's a matter of, like, someone put it up, they're like, every guy in WWE... And I don't, they said forced, but I'm gonna renege on that a little bit but every guy in wwe young guys are forced to just lick undertaker's taint every five months and he goes on joe rogan and is immediately like you know what fuck him 
fuck him. There's a few ones with Edge here and there who I'd probably guess he's like, you know, those new kids, Baron Corbin, Randy Orton, you know, the youngins. They've got that edge to uh. them. This this really does speak to because I do see that generational divide between the oldest, like the oldest guard, but it's it's better now, Taker. It's just better now. I know that you probably don't want to hear that, but it's just better now. Match quality is better. Storylines are arguably better because we've been uh. forced to get. Eh, it depends. Not on Raw. Absolutely not on Raw, but it's more entertaining. Yep. And the health of your wrestlers is better by a magnitude. Yeah. What happened to them boys being able to go out there and I want to take chair shots to the head back for the boys. That's what old old Taker wants. (laughs) I just want to snort some cocaine straight off my own ding-dong in the locker room and not get looked at weird because I'm in Creed's recording. I'm just kidding. I never was able to do that. However, Lanny Poffo, you know that man. Doing schneef off of places you wouldn't believe. <laughs> God. All right, Dylan, who's your heel of the week? Okay, so uh, this was the crux of the uh, gentlemanly argument that Scotty and I had regarding <laughs> Alexa Bliss was literally over the last 30 seconds of the match. <laughs> yeah. Because I said that I didn't like the fact that Alexa Bliss was kicked in the head repeatedly and then had the ability to grab Asuka, hold her for an inappropriately long amount of time, and then hit a sister Abigail. And I I need the world to understand how much of an insane man I sounded like. Because Dylan's describing what would happen in real life, and I'm like, yeah, logically in real life, Alexa Bliss would be dead after receiving a kick to the head from Asuka. But you don't understand, she's got cool fiend powers now, and the, it's because she lost something important, like Bray lost the Wyatt compound and it drove him to madness. Alexa lost Bray and it drove her to madness and she can't feel pain anymore, and it allows her to have control over I sounded fucking insane, but also I'm like, I think that's what WWE's doing. I, 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 I will say, like, This is one of the times that I am truly on the fence, because you both do make good points, and, I mean, as rambling and crazy as Scotty's are, I do think that it's like, it makes sense, but still, though, why do you bitch out Asuka like that? I I don't think it's the bitching out that's the problem. If I remember, I believe Dylan's issue was the fact that she was able to delay the sister Abigail, and Asuka wasn't... Yeah, like, I get that. That I understand. Because when Bray Wyatt does it, Bray Wyatt is a big hoss of a man. I can believe that Bray Wyatt can just take you, and it's just, you're here now. Just deal with it. Also, he would, even as the fiend, like, he would do some offense first. It was the fact that, like, she just grabs Asuka, who is bigger and more powerful than her, holds her for 30 full goddamn seconds, and then hits the move. No. If I'm gonna have Alexa Bliss hitting the sister Abigail, she does it like Jay White, which is a haha gotcha bitch move. <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere. I don't know. Oh, you thought you had me? Ha ha, bam! That, that's how I need that move to go down. I need yeah. that or she has to use the claw. Those are the two acceptable ways. I she can no-sell claw. claw. I'll take no-sell claw. I loved the moment where she's just staring down at Asuka and is just like, like a horror movie villain, just trying to jam her hand down her throat and steal her soul. That I was like, that fucking rips. I am, then, I am honestly Sister very Abigail. sad now because you put the image of Alexa Bliss doing a, ver- a snap Sister Abigail out of nowhere to end that match, and I would have been okay with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now I can't. I hate that. That's not reality. Right. Right. So you see where you see where my dilemma comes in is that, like Scotty said, I understand what they're trying to do, but the thing that I felt was bitching or like you know, jobbing Asuka out was the bit where she could just get held by some tiny woman for like over ten seconds. Yeah. But Definitely. she got fiend strength. She got the strength of the fiend. You don't understand. 
Listen, definitely man, a problem. When she can military press somebody, then I'll believe she has the strength of something. <laughs> You show me Alexa Bliss military pressing like Charlotte, that's it. She's got all the fiend strength in the world. Fucking give me what she's having. Yeah. I love how our heels went from wrestlers who give a voice to one of the most dangerous terrorist groups in America to Undertaker's mad at the new breed of wrestler to Alexa Bliss does a move bad. <laughs> it, was, it was so a, a, a sliding slope. We go from the general to the specific, okay? Yeah. I'll be there honest. Was, I'll, she does hit this, it very was, good, though. Yeah, yeah, no. The actual move itself is good. Like, she gets the right amount of rotation. That's why I think a snap one would look great, because she could probably pull it off one fluid motion, wouldn't even be able to notice it. Like, imagine Randy's scoop slam, the smoothest thing in wrestling. Uh, yeah, 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 just that. Bam. Like, yeah, that's that's... Like I said, it was that was the only thing I was thinking. I was like, what's the only thing that made me angry this last week? I was like, it was literally only that 30 seconds of Raw. Nothing else really mattered to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that they're continuing Jeff Hardy and Elias. No, that, got that doesn't exist. That didn't exist again until you told me. Stop telling me that exists. <laughs> All right. Well, now on to our baby faces of the week. Uh, who would like to? Oh, wow. We all we all chose AEW, didn't we? We're fucking marks. All right. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Oopsie boopsie. Oh, well. Um. So it was a uh, it was a celebration of uh, Brody Junior. Negative One's birthday on Wednesday night. Um. And that's my baby face of the week because one, he got on the mic. And called the Dark Order idiots because his birthday had been three days previous. <laughs> and then he took some papers and he threw them at Serpentico. Uh, this, however, uh, was after he fucking brained Serpentico with a kendo stick. <laughs> which is apparently his new signature move. He is damn accurate with that <laughs> thing. I don't know where the fuck he's practicing. But, yeah, no. Kids, the kids really got like potential presence. Him with the oversized, like fucking Preston Vance's mask is like oddly, oddly iconic. Like it's really love. It's really cool. I like that he's the new boss. I, I also loved the fact that Preston was wearing, or he was wearing Brody's jacket, and on him and Preston, it reached the ground. It was like when the fucking best friends did the trench coat bit. It was two men in a trench coat. <laughs> and they both equal one Brody Lee. Oh. I also did enjoy uh, when Sting came out for his little segment with, with Darby. He was wearing the uh, Brody commemorative shirt. I thought that was really nice, too. Yeah. All right, uh, Blakey T, would you like to crank yeah, it up? I could take it from here because uh, my my baby face this week is Tony Khan because he continues to just be a great dude. Um, there was uh, he, of course, um, had um, was on Renee's uh, oral sessions earlier this week. Oh shit! Really? I gotta listen to that. Is the that audio for is terrible. Oh no! Because his yeah. mic is way quieter. Like I couldn't even listen to it. No, I had, to, it, I had to turn it up, but it was it was a very good like interview for him because he just kind of goes on um, to Dylan's point earlier, especially on how supportive everybody backstage has been um, of uh, Brody's family, especially Negative One, and um, how like he's proud of them and like he is just very he he just sounds like a proud dad. And yeah. I really like that. Um, he also, um, part of the uh, that episode was, he says the most important thing he learned in AEW was to veto bad ideas that were pitched to him. I'm like, yes, yes, that is. You can't. <laughs> I, I wonder who he's discussing there. Could it be a member of the Rhodes family? <laughs> Could it be the most self-absorbed member of the Rhodes mm -hmm. family? <laughs> And I also wonder, like, what was what do you think was his his breaking point? Like the booking that moment match that between, happened. That match between Riho and Statlander. I think he even said that's one of the matches he regrets. The one where fucking Nightmare Collective interfered the whole goddamn match. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
and then that didn't lead anywhere. And I think he was like, ah, no, that was, it was bad. Yeah, a big fuck that. By the way, by the way, the fact that Renee has continued with the name Oral Sessions really speaks to the fact that she is John Moxley's wife. Yes, <laughs> yes. Just oh. the number of fucks could not be lower. <laughs> Speaking of, by the way, uh, it's apparently one night only, but Backstage is coming back. Oh, Yeah, you, you remember when it got cancelled and they were like, they're gonna keep it going, but only for, like, big events like R the Rumble and Mania. Yeah, it, this is the Rumble edition that's coming out. That yeah. has no Renee or CM Punk? <laughs> uh, it's Renee, it's, it's Renee Booker and Paige. It's, it's the, I don't think they could have got Punk. Got punk. I don't no. think they could have done that. Um, By the way, if you, if you can, go back and listen to the oral sessions with Punk. Oh, it's good. It's, it's so good. My, at one point, he's like, "Oh, we're just the sour grapes club here, aren't we?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my uh, one of my favorite like facts that was revealed is um, one that Tony loves working with Moxley because of Mox's psychology and his cerebral nature, and also Moxley is writing a book. Oh, and shit. I, Mox is writing a book, and I'm afraid of the contents, because I, I think it's going to be like the book in Harry Potter that tries to eat your hand. <laughs> um, what we're saying is that John Moxley is having a ghostwriter, right? Like, the only person who writes their books, I believe, is fucking Mick Foley, and that's because he's a goddamn legend. That yeah. is true. He, he's probably using a ghostwriter, but I also don't envy that ghostwriter's position, because you do just... You have to sit out back with Mox as he's blow darting flies on a fucking tree and listen to his life, which sounds fucking awesome if it was me. And then, and then you're telling me you fucked someone while in a bear costume? Okay. <laughs> Can we go well, back to you, like, getting fucked up on cocaine, as your wife put it, and uh, going to the library? What did you do there? I just read some books. Okay, um... <laughs> Was this a frequent? Oh, weekly. Yeah. Also, Renee has a Golden Lover shirt, but she couldn't wear it because WWE, and now she can, apparently. Oh, hell yeah. Um, well, on to my baby face of the week, of which I have two. One is fucking Stokely Hathaway. <laughs> For the greatest video of all time, because the uh, Dakota Kai posted a hashtag bus it challenge, which is apparently just like a TikTok trend where you show off that you have a big ass, and I'm sure numerous people flocked to that post as they saw Dakota Kai get ready to do the challenge, and as she drops in the video transitions, it just goes to Stokely, who says, what were you expecting to see? What were you trying to see? I'll tell you what you're gonna see. Scooby-Doo, WrestleMania mystery. Here, come on, we're gonna watch it right now. Come with me. No, 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 come on. And he plays it on his laptop just to really drive to the point home of how much of a pervert you are. He's just like, no, no, no. Come close. We're watching Scooby-Doo WrestleMania <laughs> Mystery. It's like, come on, come on. It's time to go. Oh, but, oh uh, fuck me. That's so good. It was fucking phenomenal. But my baby face of the week is honestly not since old Drew, Drew Mack took over as WWE champion have I seen a champion be such a great baby face. As Darby fucking Allen, who you wouldn't expect the spooky skull boy to be such a great babyface, but my god, he is, because his match against Brian Cage was like watching a man get murdered. At one point, Cage just gorilla presses Darby above his head, runs to the ring post, throws Darby over the ring post, through the ring announcer's table. Darby Which was six feet away. He hit it perfectly. And you know how like a normal wrestling table like snaps in half? This bitch imploded. This thing <laughs> shattered into pieces. Jesus. And just like as the match go goes on, it was such a great David Goliath style match of Cage 
destroying Darby, and it was up to Darby using cleverness and using uh, his belt, ironically enough, to finally get a victory. Uh, also, Sting was there and did do some help, but it, it was very good, and I like that he didn't win off a coffin drop. It was Brian Cage. You had to be more clever. You couldn't just fall down onto him. Instead, he hit a avalanche crucifix bomb off the top rope and just held on for dear life to make sure that he got pinned. My my moment, like, that I don't know if he's topped it yet, but just the moment that I realized how f much of a mad lad Darby Allen was, was when they just put him in a body bag full of thumbtacks and tossed him. Oh, <laughs> I thought you I thought, were going to say, say whenever he jumped off of the ring post onto some steel steps with a fucking Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot about the Cracker Barrel. Fuck. Which, much like that table, imploded <laughs> underneath the weight of Darby Allen. It's like it was made of dust. Yeah. Okay, but weird, yeah. Uh, weird thing I didn't ask earlier. How uncomfortable was the Chuck Taylor segment? I didn't watch it out of necessity to not not cringe at my second favorite wrestler it was it was rough it was really i thought they were gonna do more fun shit with it but they didn't i already was upset because i was hoping he would have gotten pinned or passed out in game over but no he tapped and i'm like now you've chosen now you've made your selection um but yeah he he came out Chuck, of course, being the butler of Miro, starts doing heel shit to help Penelope win. And then, of course, at the very end of it, Miro says, tell him I'm your best friend now at Orange Cassidy, who's just sitting in the audience. Not like Darby, who sits in the high seats away from people. Cassidy's just chilling with motherfuckers. And I thought Chuck would have, like, fought back and ate a beatdown. But no, Chuck was just very much like... Mira's my best friend now. Okay, bye. <laughs> and then left. I'm like, okay, cool, I guess. It was, even if it was done well, this was such a dark episode of AEW. You had Hangman not joining the Dark Order. You had Chuck Taylor being forced to tell Orange Cassidy that his new best friend is Rusev. You had um, uh, MJF and Chris Jericho becoming the official tag team of the Inner Circle when they already have an actual ass tag team. It was just yeah, dark but those segment. Guys gonna, the, the, those guys are going to move on. Even commentary was like, you know, they haven't really gained anything by being in the dark or, or being in the inner circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then what was the other bad? Oh, uh, I was excited at first, but the match wasn't that good. So I got sad. Pretty Peter Avalon. <laughs> Oh. had a 20 minute match with Cody. He went 20 minutes with Cody. And then he, and I'm like, then he, I understand and, and then he where Cody came out because he was about to get slapped in the face. Yeah. And I understand where Cody was coming from of like, I want to try to put over pretty Peter, make him look good for the audience. I'm like, but you didn't though. You still made him. The reason he lost that match was because Cody threatened to slap him. He doesn't want his pretty face to be messed up, so he just taps. And I'm like, then you're not putting him over as a wrestler. You're saying it took you 20 minutes to pin a guy you thought you could beat in one minute. <sighs> so, uh, did I tell you my, uh, my theory for what's going to happen at, uh, at Beach Break regarding the wedding? No, no, mm -hmm. no. Literally, I'm, I'm waiting for the bit where it's like, <clears throat> do you, like, take it, there's going to be the I do moment, and you see, see Miro, he's so happy, and then, bam, chair shot to the back from Chuck, who's just going to be like, it was until the wedding. <laughs> I, oh, man, they probably won't use him a lot, because he keeps doing indie dates and getting exposed to COVID, but, like. I would love if old Joe for Janela interrupted that shit. I'd love if he came out. Because, like, they had a mini rivalry, but it wasn't enough for this. Th that could have been a Alita Edge versus Matt Hardy, but better kind of angle, but, but, but he, it wasn't. But Joey really didn't want to do that. Oh, was, was that the thing? Yeah, somebody asked me, he's like, I would rather start delivering pizza for Domino's again than do a, do a fucking angle with my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of Lita, by the way. <laughs> Can't believe we didn't. Uh, make Vince McMahon a heel because apparently 
the live sex celebration, Lita was threatened oh, to be fired to do if it. she didn't agree to it. Yeah, and even everybody involved, like she said, Sita and Edge tried to stop the fucking thing, and he would not. I want to see boobs. That's Vince McMahon. Show me boobs, Vince. Calm Here's the thing: the she was still down. in her underwear during it, which is yeah. weird because at one point Edge comes out with like a pair of like panties and then like rips it off. She's still wearing it. And I was just like, well, what the fuck was happening then? <laughs> what did you re- did you was it like Sting with two masks? <laughs> 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 I, I don't know, boss. I did what you told me to. I ripped off her panties, but there was another one under, right under there. Right underneath. That, those were Cena. Cena gave them to her to be like, here, just in case. Just it's like a fucking scene from Money Plane when Edge's character doesn't realize there's a co-pilot on the fucking plane. <laughs> and the co-pilot is John Cena. Cena. <laughs> Okay, now I have my new favorite headcanon in the world, which is during the live sex celebration, John Cena was under the bed, like, with a hole through the sheets, and he was handing props up to Edge through the whole time. <laughs> oh, Oh, fuck. shit. Okay, what did you boys learn this week? I learned that apparently John Cena's a magician. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that video games backstage make wrestlers healthier. And I learned that fucking Alexa Bliss does a good sister, Abigail. Fuck you. Where can people find you on the internet? <laughs> All right. Before we can get into that, you can find me at Blake A. Tanner on the Twitter. You can find me at the Darkroom Vidya on YouTube. And you can find me here on the BS Network doing our BS Network things. And you can find me on Twitter at Scotty Mo S C O T T Y E M O. You can check out all the other podcasts, including Fun Fiction, the show where we watch movies, media, and make terrible shit out of it. We just did an episode on Bray Wyatt with Lilith from Big Match Minute, and it got buck wild insane because my co-host knows nothing of wrestling, and so their reaction to the Firefly Funhouse match was absolutely fucking great and you can find that and all the other podcasts at a load of pure bs.com special thanks to mega ran for our theme song fighters from mega ran by be mega sure to ran. go read his uh, be sure to go read his uh his new autobiography yep he released a uh, a memoir called dream master check it out we're hoping to get him either back on here or on fun fiction again soon so he can promote it a little bit more but yeah get dream master um he actually had a live reading of it yesterday. I'm upset was I wasn't that, was able to make it. Was that when he was wearing it. the MF Doom mask? Because that shit was tight. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, I think the MF Doom mask was from today. But, uh, yeah, go by Dream Master. And as always, you can find us at aloadofpurebs.com. Step up to the merch table at merch.aloadofpurebs.com. Find us on Facebook, donate to the Patreon, subscribe on YouTube, and remember to follow us on Twitter at Fight Boy Show Dalton Castle. Because when you're a fight boy, you're a fight boy for life!